Our scripture today, we're continuing from last week, is going to be out of Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. You recognize it from last week. The sheep and the goats, it says. When the Son of Man comes into glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you, are, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed. Into the eternal fire prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was, a, I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you again for this reminder this week. Lord, that, that you are everywhere. You are in all things, Lord. Including our hearts, if we know you this morning. Father, be with us as we get into your word. As we study it, Lord, which is a blessing just to be able to come and do that. Be with us this morning. Open our hearts. Lord, help me to speak clearly and boldly for you this morning. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this week we're continuing where we left off last week. So I want to review a little bit of what we learned. I'm not going to quiz you or anything, but I want to talk a little bit about what we looked at. We went through a lot of scriptures last week. We're not going to cover quite so much today, but we're going to go over a little bit of what was in there. And I hope this week you had a chance to meditate on them. I hope you had time to think about them. Maybe even this week you'll have time to look back at some of these scriptures to, or to look at what we're in this week. It just, it helps it to sink in. Just like, just like reading your Bibles while we're going through scriptures, following through, underlining, all that helps to keep it in here. Often when we were in school, we were told to write things down, even if it's just something you're trying to remember, something about writing it down. Just, I don't know why. I, I, don't, I don't study that part of the brain, but for some reason it works. But being in there, repetition seems to make a difference. So first off, we learn that if we put our faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which, which is to say that you have confessed him as Lord of your life, that you have come to him with a repentant heart seeking forgiveness. And ask him to lead you through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you've done this, then you are a co-heir with your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Heirs to the kingdom of God, which has been prepared for you. And for all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't know that or didn't know that, then, then last week that should have been probably the most exciting thing you learned out of the scriptures last week. Was that we're co-heirs. To the kingdom of God. That's pretty exciting. That should be exciting to us. We should think that's pretty awesome. The second thing that we picked up on last week, in reference to, to what we're, the kingdom that we're an heir to, the inheritance that we're waiting for, hopefully with giddy anticipation. I don't know how many of you get giddy, but I hope you're excited. We have no idea when it's coming. Yes, we're inheriting the kingdom of God. Yes, he's coming back, but we don't know when. No one 
knows when. In fact, the scriptures tell us to be weary of anybody who claims to know when that's going to happen. We are told to be careful. Not to listen to any of that because there will be no mistaking the day of the Lord. It's not going to be just one dude saying, hey, I know when it's going to happen, or hey, I, I saw him. It's going to be a little bigger than that. If we go to Matthew chapter 24, verses, starting in verse 23, it says, At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, or do not go out, or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning come, for, for as the lightning that comes from the east is visible in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. It's a pretty big deal. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Again, there's going to be no mistaking the coming of the Lord. If we're here for it, you're not going to, you're going to know. It's not just, like I said, it's not just one guy saying, hey, I think it's coming. You're going to know. It's going to be here before you know it. So we need not worry. If we have faith, we know our final destination. We know there is nothing that we can do to hasten or to lengthen the day of his return. Our job, our mission that he has given us until that day, whenever it may be, is to be ready. And by ready, I don't mean we, we sit in our house hugging our Bible saying, the Lord is coming, I'm ready, the Lord is coming, I'm ready. That, that's not what he's talking about. We're not to be the ostrich with our head in the sand. We're, we're not to be just hiding away, waiting for him to come back. That's not what he means by being ready. Now, last week we looked at some parables that, that talked about being ready, what it meant to be ready. We read that, that we're to be vigilant, that we're to keep our lamps lit in preparation for his return. We're to keep that light of the Spirit glowing, burning inside of us, all the while continuing to live by the leading of the Holy Spirit, which, if we obey, will lead us to continue the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's part of being ready. <coughs> we are to live a life honoring and pleasing to him, in service to him until his return, in service to one another. Our scriptures this morning told us a little of what it looks like to be the one who is ready and what it looks like to be one who is not ready, one who is not led by the Spirit, one who misses out with very serious consequences for those who miss out, those who do not put their faith in Jesus Christ. Matthew 25, 31 to 33, the very first couple verses there. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. All the nations will be gathered before Him. And it says we'll be separated left to right. I stop here briefly as we go through our scriptures this morning to reiterate something. <clears throat> for, for a few groups of people this morning, whichever, because I can't know the hearts of everyone here. The Lord does, but there's no way for me to know. I stop briefly. For any here this morning who may be on the fence on whether or not this Jesus stuff is real, whether or not it matters much, whether or not it needs to be taken seriously, because you know what? Well, being a good person just seems to work okay for me. Just that, that old thing of, well, everybody goes to heaven and, and being a good person will get me there. For that group. Or the group that, that flat out denies that Jesus is real, that God is real for that matter, that, that Jesus came for our sins, that he was just some dude and, that they talk about in the Old Testament. 
Or there's another group. And this is a dangerous one because I see this a lot today in the world today as you're out and about, even in some churches, and it's scary. There are groups out there, or there are people out there who are playing with spirituality as if it's some sort of game. And it's not. Our Lord doesn't share, the Holy Spirit does not share space in the soul. He does not occupy, he will not occupy the soul with the demons, with the spirits that are out there. And there are those who, who listen to spirits that are not the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a topic for a whole nother day, but I will say this. Any leading that does not agree complete with the teachings of Jesus Christ, with the word of God, that's not the Holy Spirit. If you're feeling led to do something that doesn't completely, 100% agree with scriptures, then that's not from God. A lot of people have been led way off a path because they listen to something that's a half-truth. That's why it's important to be in our word. That's why it's important to know what it says. Because the enemy will use little bits of the truth. He knows the scripture better than any of us. You can bet he has it memorized. You can bet he knows every little part of it. Because he'll give you little bits. So that'll make something something you think you might want to do. And they'll think, wow, I'm like, that, it kind of lines up. There's, there's some stuff in there that sounds familiar. I think, I, I think I've read that in one of the books. That's how he gets us. We need to know what it says. What's in there. What the Lord says. So that we are not led astray. Or so that we will not lead others astray. So be in the word. Stay in the word. Know what it says. Know what the teachings of our Lord say. To protect yourselves. To protect your children. If we continue on in our scriptures. Back to verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right. Come you who are blessed by my father. Take your hand. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. There's your awesome inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. We know that's part of our inheritance. What, there's another little part that we're going to see a product of here as we keep going through the scriptures. But we see the, the inherited attitude and tendencies of our Lord Jesus to be, I should say, as you go through the scriptures, the result of the inherited attitude and tendencies that, that are brought about by the leading of the Spirit. It's showing us here what happens when we use what we have in hand. When we use what the Holy Spirit has put inside of us. Verse 35, for I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Now, without continuing, if I was to stop right there, you can make the assumption or the accusation that, well, anyone can do these things. Just that back to that idea of, oh, I'm just going to go through life being a good person. I can do all that stuff. And you can. You can do that. You can provide all of that to an individual, or many individuals, many people do. Keep that in mind as, as we keep going. Verse 37, then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or a prisoner go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. He says to them, yeah, you fed me when I was hungry. You gave me a drink. You invited me in. You clothed me. You visited me. And again, anybody can do those physical acts. But do you know, did you hear how they responded to him? They said, but when did we see you? When did we do that? He answers them, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You see, when you do these things, when you do, when you will do these, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ today, you will do these things. You'll be led to do these things. It won't be because you want a credit for it. It won't be because it's the popular, the trendy thing to do today, to be part of like these clubs around that just, that they go around and they do humanitarian aid. 
which in itself is not a bad thing. It won't be because you get a deduction on your taxes for charitable giving. And it won't be so that you can gain favor among your peers. You see, that is the motivation of those who are not led by the Spirit. Those who do not go, those who do not know the Lord. You see, yes, they feed the hungry, they give drinks to the thirsty, they clothe them, they visit them. And you know what? They, they might even be feeding and clothing and visiting with the angel of the Lord himself. But they don't know it, they don't recognize it. They don't think about it because that's not their motivation. They're not looking for it. There's other worldly desires, worldly ideas that have put that into their head. These are the aforementioned ones that get sorted to the left. For though they gave and they served, so did the Pharisees. They do it with false motivations. But you, and all those who are led by the Spirit, there is a distinct difference in how and why you serve. What you serve with. To those led by the Spirit, they are compelled to, to give, compelled to serve, to give drink, to give food, to clothes, to visit. You feel the need to do so often without even knowing why, but you willingly obey the Spirit. Sometimes you do so, sometimes you give, sometimes you take care of somebody knowing you really don't have the means to do so. But believing and who Jesus is, having faith, you know that if you do that, he's going to provide for you tenfold because you had faith. You believe that if you provided, he would provide. <coughs> you have faith that if you give your last coin, your last prayer, your last possession, that the Lord God will return it. That is the difference. In many cases, you don't know why you're feeling compelled to help another. I know some of you, I've had this conversation with some of you, it's just you saw somebody and something inside you said, I need to go help that person. I need to pay for that person's groceries. I need to pull over and see if that person's okay. There's, you don't know why, but it hits you all of a sudden. That's the spirit leading you. In many cases, you don't know why. It just, it just comes. And many times, any of us can hear can say, we've ignored that. We are all guilty of ignoring the leading of the Spirit at one time or another. We're busy, or, or we don't have time, or I don't know if I can afford that, or I don't know if I have the time. We, we, there's all these things, that, and we all do it. But when you see the joy in that person's face that you have helped, when you hear their stories, when you hear their pain, perhaps, or even their joys, that they express upon meeting you about, upon being helped, two things happen. They have seen Jesus through you. Through what the Spirit has done through you. And you in return have seen Jesus in them. If you're looking for it. So often we don't think about that. We we help a person and we move on. But we know because we have the scriptures that very well may be the angel of the Lord you just helped out and you didn't even know it. Quite often we don't think about that till later. We don't think about our interactions till later. Sometimes you think back in the conversation you think, wow, that, that, he orchestrated that because that shouldn't have happened. And we don't, so often we don't think about it. We should. Because we know, again, if we're in the Word, we know what it says. We should know what to expect. We should be just jumping at the chance to obey the Spirit when He gives us the opportunity. If you believe in who Jesus is, if you have faith that one day you will be with Him as heirs in eternity, and you also know that Jesus is in the sick, He is in the poor, the broken, the lost, the Spirit inside you knows it. He will lead you to those who he wants you to reach. If you let him, he will use you. This is what it is, is to live according to the Spirit. To what it is to live a life pleasing to our Lord. To realize that all we have is his. To be used for his purpose. To be able to say, Lord, take what you have blessed me with and allow me to use it.
for your glory. Allow me to take the talents you've given me to use them, to, to, to train in them, to learn so that I can use them to the best of my ability in a way that shows honor to you, Lord. To ask the Lord every time you receive a dime, whether it's through a paycheck or whether it's through a, a, an accident of good fortune. I couldn't think of a good term for that. So that's what I came up with. But everything we receive, monetary or not, do we ask the Lord? Do we think of that? Do we say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? It's yours. How do you want me to use it? If we do this in every aspect of our life, you will be amazed. And it won't take long. When you start to treat everything as though it's his, because it is. When you make that change, he will begin to make changes in your life and those around you. This is, this is proven over and over again. And I, wouldn't, I don't have a doubt in my mind. I wouldn't say it if I did. I want to look at Malachi chapter 3. I know it's back in the Old Testament. Malachi 3, 6 to 12. I, I the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me, he says. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines of your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. He said, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, I'm not talking this morning about just your weekly tithes and offerings. I'm talking about coming to the realization that every single thing we have is His. Every aspect of our life belongs to Him. If we, if we treat it as such, if we test Him in this, imagine what He would do. Yes, you can test Him in it because He asks you to in the Scripture. Are we willing to be obedient in every aspect of our lives? And I mean me as well. Every aspect, in our money, in our time, in our talents, in our possessions, in our marriages, in our parenting, in every aspect. Try him in this. Test him in this. You cannot outgive God in any aspect of your life. Not in any. So I ask you this week. As, as followers of Jesus Christ sitting here this morning, as those who will be sorted to the right, who are we to deny it if we have put our faith in him? Will we, as the scriptures say, rob him? Are we keeping what is his to ourselves? James McDonald says it best. He says, I don't want God's money in my house. I don't want God's stuff at my house. If there's anything I have that's his, I want it to be used what he wants me to use it for. I don't want him to say, well, <laughs> that's mine. I gave you that and you didn't use it. I don't want his stuff at my house. I don't want the talents he gave me to be unused. Let us not be like those that will be sorted to the left. This week as you go from here, I tell you just all, let the Spirit lead you. Let it lead every decision you make. 
Ask the Lord in your prayers this week. Lord, convict me if there's something I need to do. If there's something I'm not doing with what you gave me. Lord, tell me. Lord, if there's something I need to do to bless somebody else. Lord, tell me. Lord, put it upon my heart what you would have me do. Do this this week. You will see a world of difference. That is the truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, everything we have is yours. Father, every person in this room, everyone sitting here with their heads bowed this morning, Lord, is yours. Whether they know it or not, Father, they belong to you. Father, I just pray this week that, that you would pour out your spirit upon them, Lord, that they would feel led like no other time, Lord. That they would know you are with them, that they would know that you want to lead them, because you do. That you want to use them, because you do. Lord, we thank you. Sometimes our blessings are in such small packages, we overlook them, Lord. Help us to wake up, Lord, every morning with, with just that renewed spirit, Lord, that says, thank you, God, that I got out of bed. Thank you, Lord, I have a job. Thank you, Lord, for every part of my day. I thank you for this this week, Lord. I pray you bless each one of these this week. In Jesus' name, amen.